Jungle as a role is all about predicting what your opponents are going to do and punishing it. But if you're a jungler that's playing against low elo players, you probably have one massive complaint. My opponents don't play optimally, so how am I supposed to predict what they're going to do? Luckily for you, there is a surefire way that will allow you to literally read your opponent's minds and outperform your elo every game. And yes, that includes the people that don't know the optimal play and barely know what they're about to do themselves. Today, we're going to show you the trick that lets you unlock your superpowers, and you'll see what every jungler gets wrong. If you're a laner, don't worry, as knowing this trick will help you immensely as well. Let's get right into it. When players try to predict their opponents, they can often get caught up in the idea that they have to prepare for the best play, and this is an entirely incorrect mindset to have. After all, the correct play is often not reality. The key is actually figuring out what your opponents are going to do next and preparing for that. Quote unquote bad players might not do the right thing, but that doesn't make them unpredictable. Let's use a variety of replays from bronze to platinum today to demonstrate this, starting with this platinum Rengar replay. Rengar finishes up his full clear and runs towards top lane to gank the overpushing Scion. While he does get his flash, he doesn't secure the kill and loses a ton of health in the process. Unfortunately, the enemy jungler comes top right after this, not only killing his Aatrox, but also pushing Rengar out of the lane and topside river. Obviously, this situation is a complete disaster, but how could we have prevented it? You might be thinking it's something to do with understanding where Graves started and knowing he would be topside after his clear. This definitely could have helped, but it's not the main issue, and not what we're going to focus on in this guide. Instead, let's rewatch this gank with some more context so that we can see why it was so bad. The first thing we need to understand is that laners clearly telegraph their intentions and lock themselves into decisions every 30 seconds. How can I make this claim? Well, let's look at this Scion for example. Right at this moment in time, Scion is going to look a little lost. Let me show you and then I'll explain why that's so important. He kills the CS that's right in front of him, and then kind of just wanders around searching for something to do, before he finally looks like he's made up his mind and walks back towards the wave. Why does this happen though? Laners at all elos are motivated by one thing. Minions. Waves are the only reason anything happens in League of Legends. Without them as a source of income, you'd see people running around in the jungle like headless chickens the entire game. But with them, laners need to stay in lanes, and get very clear-cut timings for their goals. One wave appears, and they need to decide what to do with it. Do you try and last hit, push it really fast, freeze it, walk away and ward? There are a ton of options, and then when the next wave comes, they have to make that decision all over again. If we just try to predict what our opponents are going to do, well, it might not work, just because they aren't going to do the thing that is best at any given point in time. But they are going to do something. The important thing is the timing. We can think of this like a timer that's set for 30 seconds, and every time it gets to 30, our opponents will have to make a new choice. At challenger level, this usually happens instantly without hesitation. They'll flow from one decision to the next instantly because they already know what they want to do. But in low elo, players often aren't actually sure what they want to do next. That's why you get this 5 second period where Scion looks really lost. So if we think about how low elo players make decisions, we could visualize it kind of like this. There's a small adjustment period between decisions before someone truly locks into their choice. Earlier, Scion locked in here having to push the wave after warding, and you can see that he follows up on that choice until the wave is dead and he needs to make a new decision. Now he has that waiting period before finally settling on deciding to push this wave as well. Here's the problem though. Rengar tried to gank on this timing where Scion is in his thinking period. He hasn't locked himself into a choice yet, and because of this is unpredictable. He could choose to go ward, he could try to harass under tower, or he could back up and retreat. We really just don't know. If you were paying close attention, you might have noticed that Scion actually gained vision of Rengar here long before the wave was actually dead. But because he was already locked into his choice, he was distracted and didn't even notice for five seconds. So the reason that Scion backs up is not because of the vision that he had. He legitimately wasn't paying attention. It's just because he had a waiting period and was looking for something to do once the wave was dead. When this happened, Scion started looking at his minimap and just wandering around to find something to do. Deciding to back off at this point was an easy decision. 
Part of why this gank didn't work is because Scion just had a head start here running away from Aatrox. I mean, just look at how far away they are right now. If we avoid ganking inside this waiting period and instead allow our opponents to lock themselves into their choice, we will have a much higher success rate on ganks and avoid wasting a ton of time. Rengar should have waited before even entering Tribrush to see what Sign would do next. If he decided to hit tower, then we can get the gank. And if not, then we simply just don't waste our time. He also could have skipped Krugs in order to make it top during a period where Sign was locked into pushing his wave. Full clearing meant that he just wasn't quite on time to get top before that wave died. And that's actually the best way to see results, punishing mistakes of the players in the ranks that you're stuck in. That's why we teach what will actually work in your own games, you know, with terrible teammates. Not some theoretical perfect play that only works for the pros. In fact, that's why our hyper improvement system at skillcap.com is so successful. Not only do we have over 280 high quality courses covering every role and skill you need to learn in order to rank up, but we also release 10 smurf commentaries every week on our site where a challenger player teaches you how to climb out of the exact rank you're stuck in. And if you want something more personal, then we've got you covered with coaching from our trained challenger experts. If all of this wasn't enough, we're also backed up by a rank up guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill caps, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rank you've always wanted this season. We can compare this to how I executed a similar looking gank in another platinum game. As I'm watching top lane here, I'm looking and waiting for Volley to commit to his choice. They're fighting, but until the cannon is dead, I really don't know what he's going to do next. So the second the cannon is killed, I know I'm going to get some intel. If Volley walks up to hit the wave here, I know that I have until the next wave is dead for this gank to work. So after trying to figure out the new ping wheel, I tell Orn to bait and then know that I must immediately skip my Krug camp if I'm going to make it in time during this timer. I could make the decision here to wrap around and get a better gank angle, but seeing only a handful of low HP blue minions tells me that I just don't have the time. Or Volley will be in a waiting period again and become unpredictable. While he's occupied, this is just the best time to go. So I can throw E here and run straight at him, getting his flash and one of the easiest kills imaginable. But it's all due to the timing at which I decided this would work. When watching other Platinum replays, this situation constantly comes up. In a recent coaching session, my student made a very similar play attempting a gank on spot lane. If we see that there are only three minions alive for our team, that's the signal that our opponents are almost back into their thinking period. Let's watch what happens. When this wave dies, our opponents are already facing backwards, and it's clear that they don't really want to walk this wave into the tower. At this point, we should already call this gank off. With Vi being top, soloing Dragon would be a very reasonable thing to do here, and we should try to avoid showing on map as to not give away information for free. Instead, we waste time and show on a gank that, knowing what we know now, clearly would never work, regardless of whether or not it was warded. Let's look at a bronze replay from another student of mine for a slightly different application of this idea. While he's counter jungling the enemy's gromp, we see a glimpse of his top laner diving a super low health set. Unfortunately, his top laner dies, but this does mean that we can potentially score a free kill. Of course, the best play for set is to just recall now, but we all know that the optimal play isn't going to happen. So when set shows staying top lane, we need to think about how to execute this gank. He blast cones over the wall, pops ghost, and runs to gank. Of course, he easily beats Set in the 1v1 here, but we should think about what he used to secure this. He committed his ultimate and his ghost, and frankly, I don't think either were necessary. If we look at the lane state as this gank was happening, we can see that the new wave has just arrived, and that Set is already autoing it. We know now that he's locked into his decision to push, and we have until the entire wave is dead until he changes his mind. That's a lot of time. Not only do we have the time to wait for Set to push the first couple of minions, meaning we didn't need to Ghost to get here in time, he would also be further pushed up in the lane, meaning that we probably don't need to use ult, as we have a very long time to kill him if he tries to retreat to his tower. Okay, let's look at a silver replay and use the same idea. This student is playing Master Yi and looking to kill a Yumi who is seemingly pushing a wave alone. Based on what we're seeing here, Yumi has clearly decided to push the entire wave. But again, that was only true for this one wave. Once this singular minion is dead, Yumi is going to make a new decision, and we're really far away from actually getting here in time until we wait for the next one. I think it's clear now that we should just look for something else until Yumi commits for the next wave. But we need to kill 5 seconds here doing something else and not risk showing on map if that's the case. 
Of course, by going bot now, we just show on all the wards and waste time, instead of just clearing out our camps and not worrying about the gank at all. I could pull up a million examples of the same idea not being used, but I think you get the point by now. The main idea is really simple. Identify your opponent's thinking periods and allow them to commit to their next decision. It's hard to predict what people are going to do next, but it's not hard to see what someone is already doing and know when they would want to stop doing that thing. Waves are your best friend and also your enemy's worst nightmare if you can master this idea and apply it in your games. All right, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about Skillcap. We offer a five division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us, we've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium lead guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week with over 2,000 guides curated into over 270 courses. No one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell over 1,100 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all your questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.